Hey guys, it's Corey again with Scooter ATV Sales at Scooter City. Here I'm actually going to pull apart um, a transmission, pull off the crankcase cover, show you guys the inside, and uh, just go from there. So real quick, uh, depending on your scooter, if you got a short case or long case, if you got a short case, you actually have eight bolts, eight millimeter bolts around. If you have a long case, you actually have nine. Uh, depending on what's, if you have eight or nine, will depend on your belt size, stuff like that. So just real quick, I'll just pop them off. Um, I don't recommend using an impact unless you guys know what you're doing because you can cross thread or over torque these on there. And keep note, when you guys are pulling them off, there will be one that is a little bit longer that accommodates for the drain plug for your carburetor. So keep that in mind. Uh, when you try, when you get it to this point, sometimes they stay stuck on there. You can actually just like that and usually pops right on off. So you got your kickstart gears and everything uh, over here. You have your clutch up in the front, your variator up in the, or your clutch in the back, I mean variator up in the front you also got your bending gear uh, make sure that doesn't pop out um, so real quick I'm just gonna pull them apart for you guys um, the clutch just a 14 millimeter variator is 17 up in the front there we go So for the variator, you got your little fan um, and then the uh, starter flywheel. So when your engine kicks over, it actually turns the engine over. Uh, you got your clutch bell housing right here. You just slide this off. You got your clutch, your belt, and then your variator. Oops. The variator comes in a couple pieces. One second. So for your variator, it's pretty pretty easy. You just got your little rollers, the plates, and everything like that. Um, when you guys are reinstalling them, if you're ever gonna put any upgrades or anything like that, make sure they're in the right spot. Because if not, you could actually have uh, catastrophic failure down the line. So each one just goes in like that, right up against the uh, uh, middle right there. And what this does is when your engine spins, the faster it spins, pretty much these guys will, will roll on out and which will cause tension to be grabbed on your belt, which will cause your clutch uh, to expand and then it grabs onto the bell housing. So pretty easy, just you got six little rollers that pop in. Uh, when you guys are, have your variator fan, check to make sure uh, these little plastic pieces, the little guides aren't damaged. If they're damaged, you'll actually um, end up just destroying your variator stuff like that. And then you got your variator pin. Should fit in nice and slug. As you can see, there's no play. If you actually do have play, it's pretty much time to replace your variator. Um, you also got your starter bendix up here. So when you guys are putting this back together, just kind of make sure that stays up there. Uh, you'll slide that on real quick. And you got your belt and your clutch. This takes a little bit of effort. Sometimes you gotta have some finger strength. So when you're putting your belt on, you gotta squeeze the clutch and actually start sliding the belt in. And then as you can see, it slides right on on. Uh, you don't have to worry about tightening it. Usually when you fire up these engines and everything like that, after you put it all back together, it adjusts itself. And then when you guys are putting these on, there is some splines. I don't know if you guys can see it or not. Make sure you get them all the way on here because some people will put them on, the splines don't line up and they put the nut on and they just chews up everything in there. So, there we go. I 
And yes, so everything's in place now. We can put this uh, kickstart cover back on. Um, when you guys are putting it on, you do have two little dowels. Uh, so try to make sure those don't pop out of place, stuff like that. Makes it a little bit easier to put on. So you'll slide it on in. Goes locks into place. And then you got your bolts. So real quick, I'll show you. As you guys can see, that one right there is actually a little bit longer than the rest of them. Like I was saying earlier, the reason why is for the uh, drain drain plug for the carburetor. So we'll just put that one in real quick. And like I was saying earlier, be careful with impacts. Uh, like you said, you can cross thread them, over tighten them, stuff like that. So I don't recommend them unless you know, unless you've handled them before. And then when you do put it back together, you kind of want to go like a crisscross pattern like you do for, for your tire. So that way you get a nice even And then down here, you also will have your um, brake cable holder pretty much just keeps it out of the way. Make sure you guys don't forget to put that back in there. And there you guys go, just like that.